Hello, Theodore Schubert here, giving you guys another message that you will not hear at church. I guarantee that. ISIS is saying that they're going to be killing 180 Christians. That's right, everyone. 180 Christians. We had the Ethiopians killed. We had the cops that were killed. But now they're saying that they're going to slaughter 180 Christians. This is the new threat that ISIS is unleashing. They, they said they were, they said we're going to kill the Ethiopian Christians in the video. I believe it was like what 30 or 40 Ethiopians they killed. They killed them. They said that they were going to kill the cops. Was it 12 cops? They killed them. And, uh, and now they're saying we're going to be killing 180 Assyrian Christians. The reasons that they're giving is that they demanded from the Assyrian Christian community around 12 million dollars. The community said the church that representing the community said that they could not pay the money. The price that they were asking for was unbearable. It was beyond their means. So ISIS said, well, uh, we're going to kill them. And according to the report that I read, it said that the negotiation was led by Bishop Ephraim Atnayal. And he is the head of the church of the east in Syria. And uh, according to the report, this is the, 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 the negotiations have been suspended due to the unbearable demands of a terror group. And this is from Osama Edward, who's the director of the Assyrian Human Rights Network. And he says, quote, ISIS threatened to execute the 180 hostages if we don't pay the ransom. A member of the Civil Peace Committee in Tel Tamir, who chose to remain anonymous, said that internal rifts emerged among Assyrian officials about how to gather the money. The 180 Assyrian Christians are part of a group of 230 people that were kidnapped by ISIS in February from villages in the Khabur River Valley in Syria. And if you guys uh, keep track of what we post up on Shubat.com, if you keep yourself updated with what we post every day, you would know that there was a video that was released not too long ago of three Assyrian Christians who were executed. Well, these three, these three Assyrian Christians were a part of these hostages. They were amongst these very hostages. And three of them were taken out, made to get on their knees, and a bullet was put in the back of each of their heads. They were each shot in the back of the head. And then they took three more Christians, put them on their knees in front of the, of the three corpses, and the Christian man in the middle said that if the money is not paid, then we will end up like these three men. And I must say that it's very heartbreaking. And what's even... What's even... What makes this situation even more depressing is the fact that it, it could have been prevented. It could have been prevented if the U.S did not get involved in the first place. If they would have just kept the dictators in the Middle East. That's the way things are. It's the Middle freaking East. That's the way things are. You have a dictator. He's brutal. He has to be brutal. Look at this crap. This is better? And then you have these schmucks in America. These, these chicken hawks saying... Uh, saying that uh, uh, that these people need democracy and these people need freedom and liberty. And oh, look, the first Iraqi woman who voted. You had the Iraqi woman. Remember what the, the the one with the with the finger up with the little ink the little ink stain on her on the, on on her index finger. Remember that garbage. Oh, and women have the right to vote. To hell with that. Look at what is happening in the Middle East. They they wanted democracy. This is what they have because of the crazy, psychopathic nutcases in the U.S. who wanted war. They hate, and, and, and for the life of me, it's like, how many of them have repented? How many of them have repented? How many of them have come out and said, we were wrong? Marco Rubio, that evil, wicked man, evil, wicked person, could not even answer a straight question about, going into Iraq being a mistake. Couldn't even give a straight answer. He gave the typical university sophism crap that he learned when he was a student, learning how to be a sycophant. 
learning how to be a, a brown noser, an ass kisser, for lack of more descriptive terms. And you have this, these, these psychopaths. America is riddled with them. And they started this garbage. And we're trying, we are trying to do our best in, a, in our organization, Rescue Christians, to help the Iraqi people, to help the Assyrians. We, we, we're supporting uh, the militia. Shubat.com supports the militia, the Gozarto uh, uh, protecting, Protection Force, and uh, NPU, the Nineveh Plains Protection Unit. We've written several articles in support of them. We, we, we believe in the right for the Christians to defend themselves. And these Christian militias, they don't have, they don't have a lot of money. They don't have a lot of weapons. They don't, have, they don't even have a lot of ammunition. No one's helping them. Who is the U.S. helping? The U.S. is helping the terrorists. The U.S. is helping the FSA. The U.S. is helping all these bastards. And a lot of these weapons that ISIS has in their hands are American-made weapons because they supposedly stole them from the Iraqi military and the Iraqi military was given American weapons. But we all know that there's something a lot more sinister going on. We all know that there's, we all know that, uh, there's a lot more nefarious connections than, than, than uh, that which meets the eye. It's just like the drug cartel in Mexico. America and Mexico had the Merida Initiative, and tons and tons of weapons and ammunition were funneled into Mexico, supposedly to help fight the drug cartel. And is it any wonder why these same weapons ended up in the hands of the drug cartels? Is it any wonder that the, is it any surprise to us, or should it be uh, of any surprise to us, that these very weapons and this very ammunition that was funneled into a Mexico by the tons reach the hands of the cartels, of the Templars, that are now being used to slaughter innocent Christians in Mexico, innocent Catholics. You don't think about this stuff, do you? We talk about Christians in the Middle East. The Christians being killed in the Middle East, what religion do you think they are? You think they are the, the schmucks in America saying that Jesus talks to them when, when they're shaving in front of the damn mirror? You think, like, you think that the Christians in Iraq are like these schmucks, these, these women, Brats getting up on the stage saying that, that God talks to them every morning and that they're that they're preachers and that they're oh, we're priests. Oh yeah, I'm a priest and I'm a prophetess. Ah, I'm a prophetess and I'm gonna give you the spirit of God is in the house. When you have three prophetesses in the room, ah, you have the spirit of God ah, in the room. When you have a prophetess in the room, baby, something's gonna happen. You think that the Christians in Iraq is like the garbage and the trash that you see in the television with the televangelists, these fat, gluttonous women. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. These fat, gluttonous women who would have supported the war in Iraq, who probably did support the war in Iraq when it happened, that led to the killings of Christians. The Christians in Iraq are Catholics and Eastern Orthodox. Yes, there are some Protestants, but they are far and few. And who was being killed in Mexico? Catholics. Who are the victims of the drug cartels? Catholics. Who is who are fighting the drug cartels? Who is fighting the drug cartels? Catholics. Priests who are telling people to stop buying drugs, stop taking drugs. The cartels are killing them. And the Catholics are taking up their guns in Mexico and they're fighting this garbage. This this is the Cristero War of our time and no one is paying attention to this. And you have Christians in Iraq who are fighting the fighting ISIS, fighting the Islamic terrorists, and they're being killed by the Kurds who America is helping out. Being killed by the, by the Kurds. And uh, who's talking about the Christian militias? Who's talking about the Assyrian guards? Who's talking about the lions of the cherubim? Who's talking about the lions of the canyon? Who's talking about the army of Jesus and Mary? Who's talking about NPU? Who's talking about the Gazarto Protection Forces? Who's talking about all these militias, Dweth Nasha? Who's talking about any of these militias? No one is talking about any of these militias. We need to help the Christian militias. We know the government isn't going to do jack crap for them. We know that. We as a society, we as Christians, need to help our brothers in arms who are fighting the terrorists in Iraq 
and who are fighting the terrorists in Mexico. And I'm going to try my best to provide that avenue for you guys so you can support these militias. I've already provided some of the avenues. We put up links to support uh, uh, the NPU and Shubat.com. And uh, I want to I want to further I want to further open this avenue to make it wider for you guys because we need to fight this evil. And if we don't fight this evil, then we're damned. God will damn us if we don't fight this evil. If we're gonna sit here and act like uh, act as though that we're Christians while at the same time we're watching the Astros games and we're watching uh, the Houston Rockets and we're watching um, the the, N the the NBA and the NFL and the MPP and all that garbage. Uh, if you think that you can act as though you're a Christian, if you think that you can, th if you think that you can believe within yourself that you're a Christian and just sit here and watch people dribble balls around and throw balls and kick balls around, then you have another thing coming to you. If you really believe that uh, sitting on your couch and watching a bunch of uh, sweaty guys throw balls and dribble balls and put balls in a net and and scream, oh yeah, oh yeah, you know, you, Ohio State and Utah State and oh, Brigham Young University and all that garbage. If you think that that's Christianity, then uh, you're living in delusion, my friend. I'm sorry. Uh, you need to change. You need to fight the good fight. You need to support those who are fighting instead of just sitting around and being useless. Don't be like the pagans in ancient Israel who sold their souls for a gymnasium and allowed the pagans to take over their country. It's in the Bible, by the way. It's called the Book of Maccabees. The Protestants threw that out, but I would uh, greatly exhort you to read that. Be as the Maccabees who fought those very pagans. Be as the Maccabees who fought the persecutors. Be as the Maccabees who with zeal and weapons, working through love, fought against evil and perversion and perversity and heresy and paganism, and violence, and idolatry, and fought for the love of humanity and for the love of God. Jesus Christ tells us to love our neighbor and to love God. What does that mean? Love humanity. Love God. If you love humanity and you love God, you're going to defend that which God became, humanity. God became humanity so that humanity could be united against Satan. This is Theodore Schubert. Hope you guys have enjoyed this message and hope you guys have learned something from this message. You just heard some Theo logic. God bless and God be with us. Oh, 